Um, while I have you here, I have to ask you this because you were doing TV for McMaster basketball games on the weekend. Yep. And I got to say, I wrote about it today in the paper. You were there. On the weekend, McMaster had the top-ranked volleyball team in the country. They lost in the semifinals. Uh, McMaster had the fourth-ranked basketball team in the country, lost in the Ontario quarterfinals. McMaster had the eighth-ranked women's basketball team in the country, lost in the Ontario quarterfinals. And I don't mean to bring it up, but had a football team that lost in the Vanier Cup. It's not your fault it happened. My question is this. Those are great results. They, the, the, the fact that they were ranked that high, all these teams, that McMaster has become this athletic school that excels in so many sports. However, we live in a city, and you know this as well as I do, that still very much struggles to get eyeballs onto university sports. Yeah. When Mac wins, and I mean not as an individual game, the year after you guys won the Vanier Cup, there were 37,000 people at the Rogers Center to watch the next Vanier Cup. This, in my mind, this year was a huge opportunity to win a few national championships and really do something to impact the the viewership, the the reach that the school's great sports teams have. Do you look at this like this was a great, exciting, successful year because they got so high in the rankings, or do you look at it and say, no, you know what, honestly, we got to be honest, it was disappointing that we didn't come away with some national championships. It's a very interesting conversation surrounding this year as we start to round up and the, and the winter sports begin to finish up, is that... You know, going beyond the football team, you know, playing out of our minds and going way deeper than we likely should have in the playoffs, making it to the Vanier and all of those other things you just mentioned with men's volleyball. They probably should have won the Vanier Cup. Yep, and women's volleyball lost their home quarterfinal match against Western as well. Women's rugby made the CIS tournament after they won the OUA championship, then lost in the final to St. FX after having a lead. Men's soccer this year made the, the national CIS tournament, lost in the final one nothing against York. We lost about three or four national championship games just this year. Wrestling got second overall. Yes. yeah. There's all these situations, and you look at that, and you would say, if you're in a professional sports setting and you're constantly coming second, some teams will blow up their roster. They'll change the coach. They'll do all these things. We are not professional sports. We are... I, I call the OUA the mini Olympics that happens every single year because you have all of these sports, male and female, happening around the clock, around the year, athletes training nonstop. We're in a situation at McMaster where we have put ourselves in such a good spot that we are nationally competitive, arguably with as many or more schools in the province or the country in every single sport. We might be the greatest sport school right now overall. Agreed. Facilities, athletics, trainers, Agreed. coaching, all of that. Not able to finish, again, looking at it from a pro standpoint, an issue. And you want to finish. Don't get me wrong. That's, you know, do you think Dave Preston's coming home right now with a CIS coach of the year going, yeah, you know, we had a good tournament. We lost in the semis. That's fine. He wants to finish. Coach Stefan Patasic wants to finish. Amos Conley doesn't want to lose in the quarterfinals. Teresa Burns doesn't want to lose in the quarterfinals. That's never the goal of a coach or a coaching staff. But in amateur sport, to put yourself in a situation where you expect to make a CIS final in about six to ten sports is pretty damn special. I, and I, I agree with everything you said. The, I guess the one question I would have is, and, and I go back to where I started, all these were great results. And, and, the, and the fact that this is not the NCAA and you don't have the kind of recruiting and who knows what else going into this kind of stuff. And yet we're in a city, we're in a, a province, we're getting attention to, for people outside the school and outside the alumni to pay attention is a challenge. And it seems the one way to actually make that happen is to win a championship. It may be unfair, it may be too lofty a standard, but it seems like it's the one way that really gets people paying attention. And so when you look back at this year, do you say, man, we, we, we had a chance, we really had a chance to get a lot of people who wouldn't have otherwise paid attention to us, or do you say, listen, if we're finishing second in the country or third in the country and people still aren't paying attention to us, yeah. screw them, we don't need them. The way that I would argue that would be some of the statistics that I brought up earlier would be the Carlton Ravens winning 10 of the last 12 championships, the Brock men's wrestling team winning 11 of their last 16 national championships. Laval Car football. Carlton, yeah, yeah, Laval <laughs> football. They have won eight Vanier Cups since 1996. And again, they, they kind of started from the dust and grew themselves up and they've been a fantastic program. Uh, but when you look at it, Carlton basketball is not on national TV right now. 
and they've won 10 of the last 12. What kind of crowds do they get? They draw a decent crowd at home. I think it's usually between 600 to 1,000, depending on who they're playing. But again, it almost goes against their own their own uh, draw because they have been so successful. But when they're playing Laurentian in the playoffs, nobody cares because they're waiting for the OUA Final Four to come, which is this weekend, by the way, if you'd like to tune in. Um, but it's it's an interesting question because the teams that have had that great success have not had any more true exposure than the teams such as McMaster who have been so close. The thing that I would like to see personally, and as someone who played in the OUA, is, yeah, championships mean a lot, but if you're going to the CIS championships, it likely means you won the Ontario championship. And in most of these sports, men's or women's, the OUA is the greatest conference in this country for a consistent competitive level across all. And you can look at scores and question that in specific sports, football, basketball. Every sport's going to have their issues. With every great team, you're going to have to have a poor team in that same league because they're going to beat up on each other. But what I'm saying is, why not get behind OUA athletics as a whole when you look at the great competitive week-to-week values? Nobody in this city knows what OUA men's and women's hockey looks like because the hockey teams don't play inside that league. They play club but they're not actually a major part of the university sports schedule and they're not a CIS sport at McMaster. If you ever watch a men's or women's OUA hockey game, it's incredibly fast. It's full of people, especially the men's game, who have played in the OHL. Like it's almost the same talent level and people just don't know about it because the interest isn't really there. But I think people just need to be more aware and you've done a great job of that promoting athletics and questioning it and forcing issues like this into the the light because that's the conversation that we create when you write on articles and talk about them and cover them on Cable 14 like I did over the weekend. And I think that I would love to see people just become more interested in the league as a whole before they go on to nationals because regardless of whether you win a national championship, you've won an OUA championship likely and that's a great standard to set for your program. And of course it is, but uh, I really think it's a chicken egg thing and... If you if you win the national championship, you get the attention, and again, fair or not, you get the attention if you win a national championship, and then people might say, oh, okay, I, I now know about that a little bit, I'll watch that, and so next year they will maybe pay a little more attention, and it's to me um it's it's totally unfair i understand i understand what oua and and cis athletes are about they are student athletes unlike a lot in the ncaa and it's totally unfair but i i have to look at it and say a few of these championships would have gone a long way for McMaster this year and and it's unfortunate yep. because there's a lot of silver medals and a lot of bronze medals yeah i i agree with that but i'll counter that by saying the Vanier cup in 2011 might be the shiniest most you know heroic moment in my life the greatest victory is the 2011 Yates cup it's the Ontario Championship at Western. That means the most because that's against the guys that you play against every week and you see and you talk about every single week in this province one more break For this hour on the Scott Radley Show, stay with us. Remind you of the quiz when we come back.